ancillary staff, meaning all the healthcare workers that we need are inside the hospital. Okay? In the Philippines, we are now promoting a total healing environment. For example, if you will see on this picture, the hospital room is being promoted as a hotel room so that the total healing environment of the patient will be achieved. So the goal is that instead of the patient being a uh, feeling that he or she is inside the hospital, he will feel that he is on a vacation inside the hotel with a hotel like ambiance. So this is an actual patient room in Asian Hospital and a Medical Center. However, because inside the hospital there are sick people, meaning there are germs, there are bugs, there are microorganisms present inside the hospital environment. So always remember that we can never render an environment zero of presence of microorganisms. We can never render it zero of infection. What we can do is to lower down the count of dirt in the environment or the count of microorganisms in the environment. That is why we are studying infection control. Because in infection control, we, as much as possible, we want to prevent. Then we control. Okay? So that's the goal of infection control. So um, this slide tells us the distribution of your Staphylococcus aureus. Okay? Your Staphylococcus aureus is your microorganism. It's a germ, it's a bug, that is the number one cause of your surgical site infection. Okay? And from this slide, 27% of your Staphylococcus aureus is colonized in your hand and in your nose. Meaning, majority or a big part of your germs is within your hands and within your nose. Okay? Now, let's now define healthcare-associated infection. What is a healthcare-associated infection? When you talk about Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, this is the department assigned to infection control in the U.S. So it's a global standard on infection control, U.S.-based. Okay? So it, it, it defines healthcare-associated infection as an infection that develops as the result of hospitalization, meaning the infection is not yet present from the time that the patient enters the hospital. Okay? Number two, it is not the reason why the patient is inside the hospital. Okay? Um, from the name itself, healthcare associated infection. It is an, um, an infection associated from the hospital during the stay of the patient. Okay? This is the same definition of Joint Commission International. Okay? When you talk about Joint Commission International or JCI, um, if you come across to a hospital, or if if you know a hospital being accredited by Joint Commission, meaning it is promoting the highest level of patient safety. That's why in the Philippines we only have few hospitals being accredited by GCI. Okay? One of which is um, the hospital of us, Dr. Ligaya. Asian Hospital and Medical Center. So meaning, it promotes the highest level of patient safety. Okay? Your Joint Commission International. Now, why do patients acquire healthcare-associated infections? Why do patients get infections inside the hospital? So the first reason is that their compromised immune system. Those patients who are very young, babies, those patients who are very old, because their immune system is compromised, because their immune system is at their lowest, that's why they get infections easy as compared to other patients. Second is that exposure to infectious organisms. Okay? Because it is a hospital, again, you cannot render zero microorganisms. Okay? Next is that improperly cleaned equipment. 
this plays a um, vital role for the development of healthcare-associated infections because we all know that hospital equipment is being used by one patient to another, right? It is being used by one patient to an entire ward, or it's being used by one patient or the entire department of the hospital. That is why if it's not properly cleaned, it can transmit infection from one patient to another. Okay? Your next is that invasive devices and procedures. Like for example, surgery. Reviewing our anatomy and physiology, right? The skin is the largest protection for our immune system, right? So every time there's a skin incision, we are alleviating our protection because there's eye surgical incision. So there's portal of entry for microorganisms to enter our body. Okay? Next is that lack of resources. For example, there's no available hand drop. So if there's no available hand drop in the world, how can you clean your hands if you don't have available hand drops? That is why it is very vital to provide resources as well. Another example is the education. This, this um, seminar is one part of um, resources because if you don't know what to do if you are not educated, then you are blinded on what you are going to implement. So that will add on to healthcare associated infection. Now there are different types of our healthcare associated infections. The first is your catheter associated urinary tract infection. Always remember that every time there is a presence of a device, for example, for this particular patient, there is a Foley catheter. So every time there is a device or there is a Foley catheter in the patient, there is always a risk for catheter associated urinary tract infection. Okay? Um, for this patient, what is the device being used to this patient? You have your mechanical ventilator. Okay, that's the device being used to the patient. So the patient is being attached to that device, your mechanical ventilator, that will actually aid the patient, support the patient on breathing. Okay? So once the patient is placed on mechanical ventilator, the patient is at risk for your ventilator-associated pneumonia. Okay? Next, you also have your motor drug resistant organisms. These are higher level of bugs. These are higher level of microorganisms. Okay? Now, you also have your central line associated bloodstream infection. Those patients who have central lines, okay? they will develop central line associated bloodstream infection. And of course, the last is your surgical site infection. Meaning to say, all patients who underwent surgery in the operating room, because there's a presence of surgical incision, there's portal of entry for microorganisms to enter the patient's body, which, which place the patient at risk for the development of surgical site infection. Okay? Now, this is an example of a surgical wound. What can you see based on the surgical wound? What color is this? Yellow. Yellow, right? Yeah. So always remember, there's redness. This one is yellow in color. But side, this is the umbilicus of the patient. So the patient underwent removal of cholecystectomy, or cholecystectomy, removal of gallbladder. Right? So if, uh, if you can see, there's, there's redness on the part this one, redness, and then yellow part, that's your pus formation. Always remember that if there's pus, there's infection. Okay? Always remember that. Every time you see pus formation, this one. This one. 
always remember this one. Every time you see this in a patient's wound, that's your pus. This presence of infection area. This one is redness, forming circular on patient's pus. Okay, or patient's wound. Now, let's talk about uh, statistics. My, my so let's talk about statistics of healthcare associated infection. 33,000 30, newborns in high risk nurseries develop infections. Okay. 90,000 newborns in well baby nurseries. And then 1.26 million adults and children in non intensive care unit hospitals. So imagine the weight and imagine the population being affected by healthcare associated infections. I'm very sure in your country, in China, you have a very big population, right? So meaning, big population is at risk for big infection as well, okay? So, 1.4 million worldwide hospitalized, including those in industrialized and developing countries. When you talk about industrialized and developing countries, these are first world countries, for example, you have your US, okay? And then you also have one in 10 patients admitted to modern hospital. So we talk about modern hospital, meaning in every 10 patients admitted in a modern hospital, one will develop infection, okay? When you talk about modern hospital, those are state-of-the-art hospitals, meaning they are private hospitals, they have the facilities to treat the patient. Okay? So if we go to a non-industrialized hospital, it's a different statistics, meaning patients in non-industrialized hospitals, they tend to get infections more as compared to industrialized patients. Okay? Now, risk of infections is 2 to 20 two to 20 times higher than industrialized nations, okay? So, let's talk about, let's talk about the chain of infection. My, my next. Are you all? Okay. Oh. My, my guess, okay, good. Um, are you all familiar with the chain of infection? How the infection takes place? Okay. There are steps for an infection to occur. In order for us to get infection, there are steps. Okay. So the first step is the infectious agent. So meaning, this is the reason why we get infection. For example, these are viruses, these are bacteria present in the environment. Okay? Then you have your source. The source where you get the infection could be me, okay? it could be you, it could be the person beside you, okay? it could be the environment. That's the source of infection. Okay? And then there's an exit, meaning how that bacteria or how that fungi will exit the source. For example, for me, it's coughing. If I cough out, there's a possibility of transmitting viruses and bacteria in the environment, okay? And then there's means of transmission. It can be direct, meaning it can be from one person to another. That's direct. And then it could be via aerosol or within the air, okay? It could be via ingestion, okay? And then you have your portal of entry, and then you have the susceptible host. Who is the host, or who is the susceptible host? Who can be infected? It's always the patient who's at risk for infection. Okay? Now, let's talk about, I'm um, going back to high-risk population, right? Babies, they are also vulnerable. 3 to 20 times higher in resource-limited countries, okay? This will just track down the aging population, meaning those patients who are very old, they can get infections too. 
like approximately 60% of them get lower respiratory tract infection. Okay. Now, let's talk about transmission of pathogens by hands. How do hands transfer infections? Okay. For this particular slide, if you see, there, there are presence of orange spots, meaning there is a presence of microorganisms within the patient's body. And then, here comes, let's say, the healthcare worker or the nurse. Right? For this interaction, you will see that the healthcare worker is what? Taking the pulse of the patient. So from that initial interaction, from the healthcare worker touching the patient, there is already a transfer of microorganism from the patient's skin to the healthcare worker's skin. Okay? So the next thing that the healthcare worker should do is to what? What's this? Hand washing, right? Yes. However, if that healthcare worker fails to complete the complete step of hand washing, there are germs being left on the healthcare worker's skin because it's not properly done. It's incorrectly done, right? So this is the presence of the hands of the healthcare workers that is not properly cleaned. So imagine the growth of microorganisms. These are your fingers, right? Your thumb, and then you have your palm. That is how your dirty your hands are after touching the patient. Okay? This is an example of a plate, how clean your hands are after hand washing. So if you can see, there's no growth of microorganism. So going back to the scenario, because the healthcare worker failed to perform the complete steps on hand washing, that healthcare worker may pass the infection from one patient to another patient. Right? And then later on, the entire ward will be infected by that single healthcare worker. Okay? So, we all know that the patient inside the hospital is always at risk for getting an infection. We all know that. We all know that. We now know that there's a chain of infection, right? And we now know that our hands play a vital role in passing on the infection. Now, our next topic is about fundamental elements needed to prevent transfer of infections. How are we going to prevent, how are we going to control infection inside the hospital? So there are a lot of precautions that we can practice in order for us to be safe. Let's talk about those precautions one by one. Right? So the first, talk, um, the first is about standard precaution. Meaning, standard precaution is, it includes a group of infection prevention practices that is applied to all patients. When you talk about all patients, all gender, male, female, young, old, middle age, um, Filipinos, Chinese, it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't differ at all. Meaning, it is standardly applied to everyone. Okay? It is based on the principle that all blood, body fluid, excretion, except sweat, can transfer microorganism or can transfer infection. So these are the elements of your standard precaution. You have your hand hygiene, you have your personal protective equipment, you have your safe injection practices, you have your respiratory hygiene, and you have your environmental cleaning. So let's talk about hand hygiene first. Hand hygiene has been cited as the single most important practice to prevent transfer of infection. Okay? So I have here a video. It's actually a model of how we do hand hygiene in the hospital.
So that is how important cleaning your hands are. Remember in the video, as soon as the patient enters the hospital, right? Hand hygiene is being promoted already. And it transpires from one location to another all throughout the patient experience inside the hospital. From admission to discharge, hand hygiene is being practiced or hand hygiene is being promoted. Okay? Now, there are two ways of cleaning our hands. Okay? When our hands are visibly dirty, we see that our hands are dirty. That's the time that we clean our hands with running soap and water. On the other hand, when our hands are not visibly dirty, like for example now, look at your hands. It's not visibly dirty, right? You don't see any dirt on that. That's the time that you clean your hands with alcohol. It's just with just alcohol. Okay? So again, there are two ways of cleaning your hands. The first is that when your hands are visibly dirty, visibly dirty, you clean your hands with soap and water. When your hands are not visibly dirty, like for example, right now, your hands are not visibly dirty, you clean your hands with just alcohol. Okay? Now, there are five moments for hand hygiene. This is very critical during patient care. Meaning there are five scenarios wherein you need to practice hand hygiene. Okay? The first is before patient contact. You should clean your hands before patient contact. Meaning, like for example, if I'm the nurse, okay, I clean my hands before I touch the patient. Okay? Because my hands are always dirty. That is why I should clean my hands before I touch the patient. So that any microorganism present in my hands, I will not be able to transfer it from my hands to my patient. That is your moment number one. Okay? Now, let's read all. Your moment number two means, can you read it? Moment number two? Before aspect test. Before. Aspect test. 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 Yes. Correct. That's correct. Thank you. Correct. Meaning, before any clean task. For example, before preparing the medication, before preparing the medicine that you are going to give to the patient, you should clean your hands. Right? Your next step is that after body fluid exposure risk. As cited in the example, what is this? Urine. What's this? Urine. Your urine bag, right? Because there's urine in your urine bag. After you touch it, because it's contaminated, because it's dirty, you should clean your hands after. Okay? Now, your moment number four, what's moment number four? Can you help me read it? Uh, after patting the contact. Okay, correct. After touching the patient. Okay? So that, the reason is that because I touched the patient, the patient is not clean, so any dirt I got from that patient, I will not be able to pass it. Okay? Your last is after touching the environment. The environment meaning the room or the patient's room. Okay? Because everything that's inside the hospital is considered dirty. Okay? That's your five moments for hand hygiene. So always remember, every time you encounter these five moments, you should clean your hands. Okay? And when you talk about your five moments, when you go back to China, because you will be nurse leaders after this, right? Because this is a master's class. So when you go back to China, you will all do your policy, right? You will write your own policy. You will implement your own policy. And this is a good policy that you can use. Because this is standard. This is from the World Health Organization. So once you use it, it is internationally or globally acceptable. Okay? 
So remember this slide. Okay? Now, let's talk about poor hand hygiene. Why do healthcare workers tend to not comply on hand hygiene? Okay? Number one reason is education. Because this this is one way, um, this is one good education session because you will all be familiarized with the importance of infection control. Because again, if you don't know what what should be practiced, you don't know what you will apply to your patients. And that's difficult. Okay? Next is that nurse patient ratio. If you have so many patients, you tend to forget to clean your hands because your priority is your patient. So you tend to forget. Okay? Next is that patient needs priority or you just tend to forget. Next is that not goal model. Okay? You will be your own role models when you go back to China, right? Because you study outside of China, you're being educated, you get best practices. So the goal is when you go back to your respective um, country, you practice all your learnings, right? Do you have that thinking already? That you are towards coming to be one of the role model nurse, right? You should, you should have that feeling now. Because um, aside from other nurses, they are newbies nurses, right? So you, you, will, you will become expert nurses after finishing this course, okay? And then lack of soap. Because at the end of the day, how, how are you going to clean your hands if you don't have soap, right? If you don't have resources. Next is that irritation and dryness, wearing of gloves. Those are the reasons why we tend to comply low on hand hygiene. Um, this is the same scenario. Now, we are done on hand hygiene. The next topic is about personal protective equipment. You have your gown, you have your mask, you have your goggles, you have your gloves. All of these are your personal protective equipment. Um, equipments in order for you to be protected. Okay? This should be present all in the hospital for the healthcare workers to use. Right? So your course is Master of Arts in Nursing, right? What's the major?